Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Fector and I am doing my informatics speech on vaccinations. So I wanted to start it off with an interesting fact from the Center of Control Diseases and Prevention, which is vaccinations prevent 2.5 million deaths per year. So the purpose of a vaccination is to produce immunity. And what that means is the vaccination will work with the body's natural defense system, which are antibodies, and it will produce immune response against these deadly diseases. So in recent years, um, parents are deciding not to vaccinate their children. And as a nursing student, I find that um, shocking because you could potentially harm your child if they contract these diseases and not only harm that child, but harm a community or a population around that child. And it's just very important to stress the uh, prevention techniques to prevent these diseases, which are vaccinations. So I'm going to cover three viruses and diseases and the signs and symptoms that you would be looking for for these diseases, how they are transmitted, the, complica the complications um, if you didn't receive treatment and the vaccinations of, to prevent these diseases and what time and um, age you would receive these vaccinations at. So we're gonna cover the influenza virus, um, the meningococcal disease and poliomyelitis. So let's start off with the influenza virus, which is also kind of just known as the flu. So this disease is transmitted by droplet secretions or direct contact with somebody with this virus. And the most common ways that this uh, virus is spread is through coughing or sneezing and like not covering your mouth or your nose and um, not washing your hands if you have these mucus secretions on your hand and coming in direct contact with somebody. So the signs and symptoms of this um, virus is fever, you know, sore throat, headache, um, fatigue, muscle weakness, congestion, you know, just not feeling good, you know, shakiness, tiredness, chills. And the main two complications of this virus is pneumonia and dehydration. And these are very serious complications because they could ultimately lead to death. And the vaccination for the influenza virus is called a triflant virus. And that means that it's, going, it's trying to cover three forms of this virus. And every year, doctors or you know, pharmacists come up with what strand they are going to um, make the virus be and what's going to be most popular strand that year. So they recommend that you get the influenza vaccination every year in the month of September just before those wintry and cold months where you ultimately start getting sick at. So the uh, second um, disease I'm going to talk about is the meningococcal disease. And I chose this disease because this disease is commonly found in dormitories. Scary, right? Um, and what the scariest thing about this disease to me is that this disease can lead to death in four to six hours if you do not receive treatment. And the way that this disease is transmitted is through person to person contact. And like I said, it's found in dormitories because that is a crowded, you know, near area that everyone is around. So the signs and symptoms of this disease are fever, rash, chills, bruises on the arms and the legs, just like dark spots, and um, stiff neck and headache. And the scary thing about this disease is one in five survivors of this disease have um, permanent disabilities which could be from seizures kidney disease mental retardation deafness and what's scary about that is like this could be prevented and if you don't get the vaccination you could potentially have a permanent disability for the rest of your life so the meningococcal virus is given at years 11 and 12 and then a booster around 16 and 18. And the reason why you get a booster shot is because um, 
around 16 and 18 is because that is the time you're going to college. And like I said, this disease is commonly found in dormitories. So the last disease I'm going to talk about is poliomyelitis, which is also known as polio. And this is a, a disease that um, attacks the spinal cord and the brain. So the um, transmission of the polio virus is through saliva or contaminated food or water. And that kind of means it's like if you go to a restaurant and this pers a person has this disease on or virus on their hands and touch something that you eat or drink, you could potentially contract this disease. And the signs and symptoms of the polio um, virus are fatigue, muscle uh, wasting and weakness, fever, headache, and nausea. So the main complication of polio is um, um, paralysis, which is um, basically you're paralyzed. And the reason for this is because the polio disease attacks the nervous, um, the nervous system. So the vaccination for polio is given four times throughout someone's life. And this is given at two months years old, four months years old, um, six to 18 months year old, and the last one is given around um, four to six years old. So in conclusion, I just want to stress the importance of getting vaccinations because I am passionate about nursing and I care about everyone's wellness. And if something can be prevented, why not? Or why not want to keep a whole population from getting sick and hurting multiple people in that area? And like I said, you heard the complications. They're scary. No one wants to have a permanent disability for the rest of their lives. So I reviewed the influenza virus, the meningococcal disease, and poliomyelitis. And we talked about the way that these diseases are um, transmitted, the signs and symptoms to look for, the complications if you don't receive treatment, and the va vaccinations to prevent them and the age you would receive them at. And I wanted to show this visual aid because since I am in my pediatric rotation, they gave us this the first day of class. And I just wanted to show everyone the chart of when you should receive your vaccination and what vaccination should be given at that time. All right. Thanks, everyone.